Welcome to Stiefel's Sightlines podcast, focusing each week on a topic or two important to investors. Well, greetings and welcome to the Sightlines podcast. This is Michael O'Keefe, Stiefel's Chief Investment Officer. Hey, in this episode, I want to get into something we do from time to time. Uh, where we're really evaluating what we're learning from earnings season. So we have the second quarter 2024 earnings season just coming to a close. And as ever, you know, on one hand, we kind of use that activity when we're, you know, managing or considering stocks for our Stiefel Choice portfolios. Of course, we're digging into earnings and the communication that comes from that. But uh, the earnings season also gives us uh, kind of two two things uh, we can uh, track. One is overall sort of direction uh, for the uh, market in terms of where earnings are going. Um, think of it as a kind of consensus, top-down views versus actually what happens. And then secondly, you know, when we think about the communication that we get from CEOs and things like that, it really is a helpful activity to kind of parse all that um, in whatever way we do. It's sort of selective listening and some screening and things like that. But basically, the punchline is we're able to kind of understand how certain of our macro themes uh, might be unfolding. So, for example, in this episode, I want to get into artificial intelligence, no surprise there, as well as um, really sort of cracks in uh, the consumer uh, which has, by the way, been pretty resilient. So anyway, let's get into it and, and start maybe with some of these top-down observations. So we've got over 90% of the companies reporting. And uh, of those that have reported, 78% of the companies have reported beats, meaning better than expected earnings. And actually uh, just under 60%, so I think 59% have reported sales that exceeded expectations. So those are all positive. And and so the way that's sort of flowing through in terms of what's happening is uh, when we sort of see the analysis where uh, there's a combination of the reports that have actually been done with the handful that yet haven't been done. So there's still forecasts that are sort of embedded in this. Um, the, the overall growth rate for second quarter compared to a year ago, second quarter 2023, is now expected to be for earnings that growth rate of 10.8%. And, and just to give you a sense for that, that's uh, almost 2% higher than what was expected as recently as June 30th. So think of it as before the season started, the view was, hey, earnings are going to grow uh, second quarter over second quarter, uh, just under 9%. And, uh, and all of those better than expected results have translated to an extra roughly couple percent of growth, which you know is quite significant. Um, as it relates to sectors, um, essentially nine of 11 sectors posted positive earnings growth, the two exceptions being industrials and materials uh, that posted declines. And uh, another sort of nuance is, as we've talked a bit about, we're in an environment where markets have run up, so there's been sort of uh, positive returns, which is great, uh, that is sort of anchored on three things, div dividend yield, uh, sort of the earnings that are being uh, delivered, and then, the, and then the, um, the price appreciation for PE going up, meaning you'd he hear it uh, as uh, uh, in the sort of the trades or whatever as multiple expansion. Um, so you can almost think of it as dividends are set, earnings are kind of set, um, and then and then the balance of it basically is oh, uh, what people are willing to pay for those earnings. And so anyway, long story short, um, when we see what's going on in the market, it's, it's driven up a lot. That means things are a little more sensitive. And so what we see is when a company misses, um, then the downward pressure on the stock is a little more than normal. And so, for example, one metric is you kind of measure a couple of days before, and after the earnings release date, and when when there's a miss, the average decline is a, is just under four percent, so three point eight percent by our calculation. Um, and so, anyway, long story short, I think uh, that's something uh, that we keep an eye on is to not get overly worried about you know when there's a miss, the stock moving down. You still have to stay focused on on the fundamentals. But just think of it as that's one way of kind of understanding that the markets are just a little bit richly valued, perhaps that sensitivity. 
in any event, as we look forward, what's interesting, at least to me, about the balance of 2024, it's almost like these better than expected results are being pulled from the second half results. So, okay, if we grew in second quarter, maybe we won't grow as much in third quarter. And so, for example, the that forecast for third quarter is now down to 5.4%, and it was 7.7%, that growth rate, as of June 30th. Um, and uh, one of the areas where we're seeing a, a still very positive results, but just a slowdown in those positive results is the Magnificent 7, uh, where over third quarter, the expected growth rate is 166 uh, that's a, a significant decline compared to second quarter when it was almost 34%. And then all of that rolls up to a 2024 growth rate now at 10.2, a little bit below what was expected for the full year of 10.9 as of June 30th. And yet when we look into 2025, there's sort of a little bit, it's a really optimistic view um, that earnings are going to grow next year. I think in terms of around 15%. As of June 30th, that number was specifically 14 and a half. Now, with uh, these sort of modest improvements, it's now 15.2. So, anyway, all of that to say, when we look top down, you know, earnings have been growing. Uh, they've remained robust. There's a bit of optimism still embedded embedded in the future. You know, we and we have been talking about a slowdown, so we're a little bit cautious about that. Uh, but of course, it, um, the, there's um, all kinds of tailwinds. AI being uh, one as an example. In any event, let's um, let's get into the consumer um, a little bit, and and I think just uh, for this purpose, I guess as it relates to sort of that macro view, you know, we look at um, companies like Mc, McDonald's, the three that sort of we zoomed in on for this uh, session: McDonald's, uh, Airbnb, and Marriott. And, you know, essentially, um, in different ways, we're seeing uh, signals that there's some stress with the consumer. And so to quote uh, McDonald's CEO, uh, Chris, hope, hopefully I pronounce this correctly, Kamb Kambinsky, uh, he basically said the pressures on the consumer have, quote, deepened and broadened, end quote. And, uh, and so, again, that's the kind of thing we're watching. A second, anyway, is with travel companies, Airbnb and Marriott, as I mentioned, they're basically forecasting a leisure travel slowdown. Um, so things have sort of heated up. They're expecting things to roll over and slow down a little bit. So anyway, little bits of evidence as we've anticipated that the consumer may be experiencing some cracks. Um, as it relates to AI, uh, something that's coming into focus is the idea that companies, and especially the big companies like the Magnificent Seven, are spending a lot of money on AI. So, for example, the four uh, four of the Magnificent Seven, that, those being Google's parent Alphabet, Amazon, Microsoft, and Meta platforms, basically, um, together, those companies spent almost sixty billion dollars, so fifty eight and a half billion dollars in the second quarter on capital X. CapEx spending, and, uh, and essentially a bulk of that went to data centers and NVIDIA's artificial intelligence systems. And so uh, essentially what we have to be mindful of is with all this investment is shareholders, understandably, are going to want to understand, well, okay, great, you're, you're basically deploying all that money. Uh, uh, when am I going to see the results of that in your earnings? And so that we think there's going to be sort of a a broadening of the focus or the, the optimism is going to remain, but we're going to start to see more discerning evaluation of company strategies and the actual success that they uh, experience as a result of these investments and in artificial intelligence. Um, now, one final note, another sort of high level thing that we keep an eye on when it comes to earnings is, are the transcripts that, uh, that, that we are able to see uh, and sort of evaluate from company management as they do their earnings calls and things like that. And the, and the bottom line is that um, we still see indications that the cost of labor, inflation more broadly, remain a headwind, maybe not quite as actively mentioned as, uh, let's say, a year ago, um, but still there. And then, and then, not surprisingly, the topic of generative AI, which really, if you go back a few years, was pretty much not mentioned that that's starting to show up a bit in uh in the uh, transcripts which aren't surprising that's not surprising uh in any event that's really what i wanted to get into in this episode um 
And so really appreciate you taking the time to listen and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Thanks again for listening to Stiefel's Sightlines. Be sure to subscribe wherever you're listening to automatically receive each week's podcast in your feed.